Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today we have episode number 28 and we're diving back into all things basketball. And this is the perfect time of year. We're about a little over a month before the tip off of the 2023 NBA season. And now is when people love to get those spicy hot takes out on Twitter, on Reddit. And I've scoured all over the place and compiled some of the wildest ones I can find. And we're going to react to them here for you today. See which ones are not so spicy, which ones are spicy, and which ones might not even be a hot take. They might just be a prediction of what's going to happen this upcoming season in the future. So we're going to dive into all of that here today. But before we get into all of that, how are we doing today, Dame? I'm excited, man. I am excited. I know it's football season, so I'm excited for that. But I'm also ready to talk about these hot takes, man. I want to see... I want to see how spicy these get because I might have I might have a few of my own I might throw in here. So let's see how spicy these takes get. For sure. This feels like a throwback to like the lunch table. People just throwing out outlandish statements um, mm-hmm. about basketball, football, anything sports related. So before we get into that, housekeeping out of the way, as always, if you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. If you're on audio platform, Spotify, Apple Music, five star uh, rating, drop a review, pre-download the show. Help us out a ton. Without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and dive right into all of these NBA hot takes. Um, I'll start the first one off. It's maybe, uh, let's say it's like a simmer right now. The pan ain't that hot yet, at least in terms of, I feel like, what we've talked about in the past. And this one says that not talking about James Harden, but Philly is going to be trading another player this upcoming season, and that's going to be Joel Embiid. Hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah, that one's simmering. Def- definitely. Right. Simmering. It's, a, it's a little spicy. It's not the spiciest take. Yeah. We, we've we've both kind of speculated that it may be trending that way with how the Harden situation and just the process in Philly has panned out. But um, yeah, what, what you think about that? I mean, I can see it happening. The writing is kind of on the wall. You know what I mean? Like, I think he might be a year early. That's what the the mm. the spiciness about it. He might be a year early, but I mean, depending on what's going on with Harden, depending on where they're at as far as a team, just because, like, even with Harden, their ceiling is the second round. So, like, <laughs> like with or without him, like, you guys are not going to the conference finals. So. I mean, it kind of would make sense to move off of Joel before he even asks out and, like, his value goes not completely down. Obviously, it's still Mm -hmm. Joel Embiid, but still while his value is at least, like, very, very high and he doesn't have the the full leverage. But I don't know if they do it because that's just – that's a bold move. Like, that's it. You're just completely saying, all right, like, the process is done. We gave up. We we folded. Like, you're just giving in to – to failure, basically, is what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. So I, I think they're a year early, but that, that take ain't too spicy. It's not too bad. I can see it happening for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I agree because I think – I don't know what the Sixers really can do to save this situation. It just feels like – to me, it's – we're just a matter of time from this becoming the outcome. I mean, I, it's possible Embiid wants to be a, you know, a Sixer lifer and he just – thugs it out through what will be a rough patch for this season and probably the next couple of years if they can't immediately retool that roster. But I don't know. It ain't too many people cut from that cloth to to stick with the team for that long after contending and want to sit and go through a rebuild coming off of an MVP season right in their prime. Um, Yeah, he's not Damian Lillard. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. Next hot take I got for you here. This one says that the Indiana Pacers will not have one, but two all-stars this year. As in Tyrese and. And yeah. (laughs) Other. Someone (laughs) else on that roster. Tyrese and who? Who are we talking about? That one might be a little bit too spicy for me. I, I don't. I just don't think it's enough of that kind of ta- – they would really have to be, like, the two-seed or three-seed. They would have to be – yeah. They, they have to be going crazy. Exactly. And I think – like, we both agree that they're a playoff lock, but two? And I need to – listen, they need to specify who they're talking about, too, because that could change depending on, you know what I mean, um, which position they're talking about. Because, you know, 
people love to say like, oh, this guy can be an all star, but it's like for someone to be an all star, another person has to drop out of it. It's not just you're mm-hmm. just filling in a spot. So I, I can see Tyrese for sure. He was already was an all star last year, so I mean that's not nothing right. crazy. But it's, the other, right. that, I don't know if I, I don't know. You looking, you one. looking at like Buddy Hield, Miles Turner, Ob Toppin, Bruce Brown. <laughs> Bruce Brown is Benedict not Matherin all. super breakout. Listen, like, I don't know. Ob Toppin, I say he go, he might win Most Improved Player of the Year. I don't know. He might slide a couple of votes. Who knows? That would be crazy. But, that would be crazy if he pulled an All Star selection out. I know Knicks fans would be sick. They would oh, be yeah. disgusted. Facts. And while you watch Julius Randle fold every year in the playoffs, and then you got this young guy who could have just traded Julius Randle, gave my man a little bit of the keys, and then could have had an all-star in your hand. But... Maybe the keys just, just need some opportunity. Literally. <laughs> need a little bit of run. He can't even get on the floor. Nah, but I, I can't I can't see the two all-stars. Uh, there's no one else besides Tyrese that I think is going to take that super leap. To, to be an all star, I don't I don't yeah. see it unless there's like mad injuries in the East, like like everybody's hurt. Even then, bro, it's like we we know what Buddy Hield is at this point. Yeah, we know what Miles Turner is at this point. It don't mean that they bad, but it's just like that. It ain't no room for them to have no crazy leap going into next season. I really like if they had to get a second one, I really would put bread on it being Benedict Matherin. Like he would just have to come out. Going crazy, 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 <laughs> have to be hooping. <laughs> crazy, you would have to be hooping. Um, speaking of most improved player, got a hot take for that award. That for this upcoming season, it will be Markel Fultz. No surprise, this is coming from a Magic podcast. Okay, <laughs> this one out, but that's that's their hot take is that Markel Fultz is going to be winning most improved player. I've got his stats pulled up here for context. Last year, he put up 14 points, uh, 5.7 assists, four rebounds, um, and about a steal and a half a game on, what is this, 51% from the field, 31% from three, which is crazy. That's his best three-point shooting season um, since he's been in the league, which is maybe good. Like The fact that he's really recovered from that crazy shoulder injury where they were talking about he forgot how to be able to shoot, like it was some nerve issue. Um, this it's been good to see him get to Orlando and kind of you know seem like he's getting his rhythm back and getting just really back into being comfortable on the court again. Um, and so I think this one is actually one that is possible to happen. Like the only thing I feel like that would be hindering it is the opportunity there. Like he's not in a new situation. If anything, there's more talent on this roster than there was last year. Um, and you're already like you're gonna be be competing against year two Franz or year two Paolo, year three Franz. You got Anthony Black coming in. Um just I don't know if he's gonna have the opportunity to take that big relief. It's gonna be too many mouths to feed in Orlando, but that's how I feel. Overall, like I, I see where he was trying. I see what he was trying to cook up. I see what he was trying mm-hmm. to cook up. The ingredients were there. <laughs> we ain't had the right pots or pans to get it done. Nah, I just like you said. I don't. I don't think the opportunity is gonna be enough for him. And you say he already averages fourteen points a game. So like him being most improved player would mean he'd go to like twenty, which is I don't know if that's even possible with like you said with Paolo, yeah. with Franz, Anthony Black coming in. I don't know if the opportunity is, is there right. for him to do that. So because off the rip, you can pencil in Paolo and Franz. They both 20 plus PPGs. For sure. A third one. I mean Magic, the way- three all-stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I hope I hope, like you said, I hope Markel folks keeps improving though, because his whole situation was just weird, bro. Like, mm-hmm. just super, super weird. People were calling him a bust. So, like, I'm glad he's, you know what I'm saying, improving. Find himself a little bit of a home here. Find himself a little bit of a role in the NBA. So, I hope he improves. But I, the, the MIP, I don't know if he I don't know if he can get that. Yeah, that might be too much. I think if that would have – I would have had to happen, like, last year. Facts. Or a year before. It can't – not with where Orlando's team is set up. Because his numbers is not getting better than – well, not getting significantly better than what it is right now. Yeah, and and if it is, bro, good for him because he that would be a crazy bounce back to for how 
the injuries really derailed the start of his career. Because like you said, people were calling him a bust, which, again, I know we've talked about it. We think it's stupid because injury don't make you a bust. But if you go back and watch his tape when he was at the University of Washington, it was very clear and evident why he was the number one pick in that mm-hmm. draft. He was special. It was not, there really was nobody else in the country scoring the basketball like he was and doing some of the things in the court that he was in college in that draft class. Like he was clearing away the favorite for the number one pick. Just didn't pan out in Philly again, mainly because of the injuries, but that. He, he might still be in him. <laughs> Listen, I tell you one thing: if you think Marco Fultz can be the most improved player and like jump up to like twenty some points a game, that means you think Orlando could be competing pretty soon. Because like, I think Ron's they not, can though. This was, but like, but I'm saying like lock like competing because if you think about it, if you get what Marco Fultz was supposed to be along with Paolo and Franz, what that, that's a team right there. If you have like. Fully reached his potential, Markel Folks. That team is crazy. Like that team is actually insane. I think the Magic can be a playoff team. Like I could, I, I could see them finishing in the standings like seven, eight, maybe seven might be pushing it, but like eight. They, they could be the. I think they could be in the play in. Yeah, you know, I don't think they could get up to like six. They got to six. That would be kind of crazy. But I'm That's trying to just insane. like the teams in front of them would be. Would be tough, but I could see them like just looking at last year's standings. Like I could see them being ahead of teams like Toronto, Toronto. Or Chicago. Yeah, right yeah they now, can, they that easily the puts them in the playing. Like right now, mm-hmm. the Nets are not gonna. They might not even be a playoff lock team. They might not be a playing team. Whoa, depending. Whoa, 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 whoa. My, Markel, Markel Jordan is not letting. Yo, that happen, <laughs> he's not letting that slide, bro. <laughs> they about to be the one seed. And they all, bro. They were losing. He was. There was like the two C when he got there, and they almost were a playing <laughs> team. Like, they was holding on for a dear life. I think they was. Uh, the playoffs. I think they was four. I think might have been four or three, and then <laughs> they just started dropping. But they had <laughs> enough of the lead to stay in there. That cushion but, saved them. Facts. Um, this one I think is the definitely the spiciest one that we've covered so far. So I might just crank the heat up on the stove. Looking at a tweet here that says Miami will miss the playoffs next year. I can't oh, get behind that. Oh my that god! One. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, first of all, first of all, they're getting Damian Lillard, so they're not gonna miss the playoffs. I Even like, if they didn't, though, that's what I'm saying. Even barring like crazy, like their roster have to get decimated with injuries. All right, I, all right. I'll, I'll put it this way: I'll play devil's advocate a little bit. They lost. Who they lost? They lost Max Struess. Mm-hmm. Um, Gabe Vincent. Vincent, and they, they haven't really. Well, I mean, I guess you're subbing back in Tyler Hero because mm-hmm. he he basically was going the whole playoffs. Their depth isn't great, and they got they and got for, ha- Hawkins. I, I mean, Hawkins is solid. Hawkins is definitely solid, but I I see what they're talking about. I don't agree with it, but. Cause I, cause I think Jimmy's not gonna let them miss the playoffs. Like I understand he coasts right. in the regular season, but like he, he that's what it is. He coasts. He doesn't like suck in the regular regular season. Then yeah, jump up. And, and he's coasting for the playoffs. So if he has yeah. to, if he got to turn it on a couple of weeks sooner to make the right. playoffs, I think he'll probably do that. <laughs> right. He's not just gonna stay at this like fifteenth right. best player in the league type of play. Like no, he will jump up to that playoff Jimmy pretty early if they're looking like they're gonna miss the playoffs. So I, I kind of see what he's saying, but. I don't know. I even if, like you said, even if they don't get Damian Lillard, I think between Jimmy and Spo, they're not missing the playoffs, bro. I'm yeah, sorry, it's, it's too well no coached. Too, nah, they're not missing the playoffs. Heat culture won't allow it. It's not, not at all. It. Not at all, bro. You go. Giannis you go. has them. Will come out of retirement himself. To make <laughs> sure that's a playoff team. Maybe, maybe that's the reason they don't have you. They're not gonna have UD. They're not gonna oh, have that. See, that we didn't, we didn't have here. a vision that he had, bro. You right. You know what I'm no saying? UD. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. If they miss the playoffs the first year that he's not there, <laughs> what does that say about his impact on that bench, bro? I, I wholeheartedly believe I I'll never know. I've never been in the locker room. I feel like I don't even see like I feel like the Heat are one of the organizations I feel like similar to the Spurs, you don't see too much behind the scenes like some of the other franchises that you do. Like I feel like I don't nah. see as much stuff in the locker room or with Spo, 
Like similar to how bro, Popovich keeps the Spurs stuff under wraps. You don't like the players mm-hmm. doing a lot of crazy stuff. You definitely don't like the media being involved in anything in the locker room. I feel like Spo is kind of cut from a similar cloth like that. So I'll never know for sure what UD was saying to them in the locker room, but I wholeheartedly believe that he really is a top tier motivator and just one of the best vets. And I'll never have any in the locker room proof to prove it, but just how you see the younger guys on the team react to him and how they respect him. He's got to be, got to be a top tier leader. No um, one has anything bad room. to say about him. Like all the right. players. For a guy who has been a bench player for like the last 10 years. Rick right. really was kind of a bench player for most of his career. Like not, not that that's a bad thing, but it's just like he never was to that caliber to be like a consistent starter, um, mm. you know, in the, for the heat. But, the fact that they kept him around that long and like even in years where it's like they could have used that spot probably for somebody who could have made a better impact on the court. His impact off the court outweighed that probably by a thousand. Facts. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, we don't have a vision and he predicted that with no UD, no missing the veteran presence there. You just, you're just not going to get it done. So. That's definitely the spiciest one. I would say this next one probably takes it another level higher in terms of how hot these takes are. My, um, my mic was about to die. Oh, my God. <laughs> you could have plugged it in. <laughs> yeah, my mic was about to die. Uh, okay. I, I, I This one is crazy, bro. Desmond Bain will be a top 20 player in the league this year and will pass Ja as the best player on the Grizzlies. Ja and Jaron. Absolutely. I'm about to say, you didn't absolutely lost me. Absolutely lost me. He what lost me at top about? 20. Desmond, like no disrespect, but Desmond Bain, top how, 20? How good do you think this guy going to get? Like he, he would have to be putting up like 27 points a that's, game. That's what I'm saying. 27, 28 at night. Like, come on, bro, stop it. And and, and he would have to be great on defense too. Cause like even if he puts up crazy numbers, it's like, bro, Jaron Jackson is a can score the ball and is like one of the best defenders in the NBA. Like he's right. not even gonna be better than him, just as far as impact. Then say over Ja. I, I need to I look at this guy's profiles. I can't get with that one. Oh, he might be a Rockets fan. Okay. That's random, but <laughs> what 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 do you think Desmond Bain about to come out here doing? Because like, I what no I need idea. The, what's the criteria logic? That's what I'm saying. Process. Like, what's the thought? Yeah, exactly. What's the yeah. thought process? Like the other ones, like the the heat missing the playoffs. Like I could see the thought process behind right. it. Like I don't I don't the think the literal he has a, only thing I could think of is he's like Jaws out for the first 25 games. Desmond Bain has to be the, the lead guard for them, right? He just come out this season, turned all the way up, going crazy. 30 ball, 40 ball, 35, 45, 50 ball. Some, he'll have to go on some crazy tear. Ja come back. Coach like, hey, bro, you keep doing your thing, Desmond. You want a little tear. And then it just rolled through the whole season. Ja take a back seat. That's literally the only way I could see this happening. That would Ja wouldn't even allow that. Ja, imagine a coach trying to go to Ja saying, "Yeah, you take a back seat to Desmond Bain." Nah, he's not going for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, how good he's playing, bro. He's not going for that. Yeah. And it's like, bro, Desmond Bain, like Ja, Ja was out a lot of the time, like these past couple of years. Like, and he has stepped up, of course, but like he hasn't been no top 15, 20 player in the league when Ja's not there. So. I don't know. I, I can't get behind that one. I'm sorry. That's a little too spicy for me. Yeah, that one is is wild spicy. I'm not going to lie. Some of these are only getting spicier from <laughs> here on out. This next hey. one, I think, is a little a little bit more calm. i seen this is some people's actual pick for Rookie of the Year. And so he has that Chet is going to win Rookie of the Year this year over guys like Scoop or Wemby, or really anybody else from this year's draft class. And since he missed all of last year with a foot injury because this this technically then becomes his rookie season this season coming up. So, Chet, rookie of the year, what you think? How how spicy of a take do you think that is? Or is that 
Is that just him predicting the future? I must say, call me crazy. I don't think that that's that spicy. I really, I don't. really think f- floor. He's got to finish top three in the yeah. year voting. I really, it's probably top two. Cause like, oh, go ahead, it go feels ahead, go like ahead. it would come down to barring health. Obviously, it feels like it would come down to like him or Wemby and Scoop. Really, between the three of them, mm-hmm. and that's not to say that obviously those are like the three highest draft picks. But really, when you look at the opportunity that they're going to have from day one, like Wemby is going to be a focal point for the Spurs. Chet is on a team that is already so well established. And so much of his impact is going to come on the defensive side of the ball where it's like he can fill in a lot of gaps for them there. And then Scoot, hopefully, if the Damian Lillard trade goes through, like that opens up so much for him. So I feel like between the three of them, he's at least got to finish as a top three finalist for the award. So I feel like picking him for rookie of the year is like legitimately that might just happen. Nah, that's what I said. I don't think that that one's that crazy. I mm-hmm. really don't. Because like you said, like, He's going to have the opportunity and like the impact he's going to have on OKC off the rip and for the whole season is going to be massive because like that team, what he brings is perfect for what OKC needs, like a tall mm-hmm. rim protecting big man um, who can score a little bit. And like he's bro, he's going to fill right in that. I feel like OKC is going to win more games than they won last year. What they went around like 40, like barely almost made the um, almost made the playoffs that were in the play in. I can't remember exactly yeah, how many games they won. games. Yeah, they so like got to be a playoff team this year. That's what I'm saying. I think they could be yeah. – I think they could sneak into the playoffs. Like, OKC is going to improve. And, like, like I said, his impact off the rip in the whole season is going to be there. Um, And, like you said, he missed a whole year. So, like, his body's a little bit more developed than if he was to play last year. Like, he mm-hmm. obviously put a little bit of weight on his frame. I can see it. Like, and that, I don't think that that's crazy of a take. Like, right. I've seen other people – like other like uh, NBA media people pick Chet Holmgren to win Rookie of the Year, so I don't think that that's crazy a crazy hot take, honestly. Yeah, and look, we see what he was doing at summer league. He was showing out on both sides of the ball. He was packing everything that came to the rim. So mm-hmm. I think that is that's not. I don't even want to really. It's not even really a hot take. I feel yeah. like it's just a, that's a fair prediction. That's a take, yeah. Right? <laughs> that's fair. Uh, this next one. 100% hot take. With or without Damian Lillard, the Trailblazers will make the playoffs. No, they will not. Hell no. <laughs> no, they will not. Y'all crazy. Bro. Come on. Now. <laughs> now look, the dual username is Blazer Legend. So, I, you know, it's, it's definitely some bias going on. They couldn't make the playoffs with, with Damian Lillard. Lillard. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? I don't need about? to say nothing else. He 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 added for me, he added some context. So let, okay, I'm, okay. Look, let, it, let us in on the line of thinking, even though it's wrong. Bet. Said, if Dame gets traded. We'll have a starting lineup of Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, Matisse Thybul, who I don't think will start for them, Jeremy Grant, and he said, whoever we get back in the Dame trade to start at center, which is bold because I know you're getting a center back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he said, Sharp off the bench will be elite. I don't think Sharp will come off the bench. He'll probably start solely because Matisse Thybul still needs to figure out how he can – play offense in the NBA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is, I, like, sidebar, Matisse Stiebel is one of my favorite players in the NBA, just low-key, just low-key, because he really clamps up, like, as good as some people are on the offensive end of having, like, crazy good IQ or instincts on where people are at at all times and passing. I feel like when I watch him play, he sees what's happening before it happens. He beats people to, to – to the spot on the floor. He uses his frame really well in passing lanes and on ball. And it's like, I watch him on offense. And I'm like, bro, can you just like, can you give me a backdoor cut? <laughs> one, knock down one corner three. I just need anything on the other side of the ball, bro. He, like you, you're an all defensive team level player and coaches are literally like I, I can't put him on the floor dudes will literally just not guard him on the offensive side of the ball bro bro does not know how to do offense like anything on the offensive side of the ball it's so crazy it's so wild bro, oh, nah, bro. I, don't, I don't I don't even I don't need a bag from you bro 
Like one thing, I just need you to select an item and go to self checkout and get that done. <laughs> you don't need a bag. You don't need a basket. Nothing. I just need you to get something, one thing in your in your repertoire. Those, these defensive guys need to get a corner three. That's it. That's like, it. You don't even have to know Tucker. That's it. All you have to do is get a corner three. You don't have to get a a, a top of the key, a, a wing. You don't got to dribble, dr- nothing. If you can get a corner three and be like an elite defender, every team in the league will want you. Right. Every team. And you will get a bag like that. And you will get mad minutes. Like – if you can get a corner three and you get at least somewhat respectable at it, you know what that also adds? If you can move, a backdoor cut. Like, now you got two things for the price of one, bro. <laughs> like, come on. Come on, bro. That's what I be saying about Vando all the time. I'm like, bro, this dude is so good. Like, he be clamping, bro. But it's like, bro, we can't put you on the floor because teams is in the paint. And you sitting there with that ugly little broke lefty jumper and nobody got a guard, bro. But yeah, Portland's not making the playoffs, so that's crazy. Yeah, I, like I, I, he thought he cooked by adding like the the lineup after. Nah, bro, that's yeah. Like we supposed <laughs> to be like, oh wait, school right sharp signed. Like no, no, bro, you're not moving me with none of those guys. <laughs> ain't move me at all. They <laughs> not move me at all, bro. Bro said so they named like he said KD, Kawhi, Giannis. Nah, bro. It's a nice try, though. Nice effort. I respect right. that. I respect the fandom and the biasness. I respect that. Yeah. Going along the, the same line of thinking, another hot take here. Wemby and the Spurs are going to make the playoffs in his rookie year. Hmm. That, but I don't think people realize, though, like, these, these teams are in the West. Like Forget the West, bro. They won 22 games last year. You're asking them to almost double their win total. Like, that just doesn't happen in the NBA unless you were, like, oh, you, like, assembled a big three in the offseason. You know, it has to be, like, a crazy turnover. Like, it's almost a different team. It's like, this is the same Spurs team. They just added Wemby, really, to it. Yeah. Um, And, like, people are growing and developing, but it's like, that there's no way, bro. If he pulls something like that off, I mean, we already know Popovich is top three, maybe higher coaches all time, like absolute minimum. Um, but if he brings in Wemby and it makes this a playoff team in one year, he's different. He's different, different immediately. As high as me and you are on Wemby, I don't think that impact is not going to be that crazy off the rip. I just, like, I also don't think he's not he's not going to play enough for that to be the he's case. Not, he's not going to get enough yeah. minutes, and he's going to get rested a lot. He's, I'd be shocked if he plays over 60 games. That's not – because that's not even their goal. Like, they're not like, All right. let's make the playoffs and, like, try to do something, like, try to make some noise. It's like, nah, like, let's get – let let Wimby get his feet wet a little bit and develop. Like, that's their whole plan. Like, they're not even focused on trying to make the playoffs. I, I can't see that. That's – nah. That's a Spurs account saying that too, or that's just a Wimby fan. Big Spurs fan in the box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bro, the funny, I would say the funniest thing about Twitter, bro, is like watching because I'm on like a bunch of different NBA Twitters. Like I'm on like Rockets Twitter, I'm on Clippers Twitter, Boston Warriors. I'm on so many different people's Twitters. And like the hoops people will try to jump through to convince you like that their team or like their favorite player is like way better than what they actually are is the mm-hmm. funniest thing in the world. It is hilarious. Like the Portland thing, like he genuinely in his mind believes like, bro, we have Simon Scoop, Sharp. Like who's stopping us? Like right. he he believes <laughs> it's that. nobody in the wet. Jokic, he can't <laughs> guard Scoop. He can't right. punch <laughs> Bro, it's so funny, bro, because they that bias, like certain people, bro, they can't get past the bias, bro, and it's yeah. hilarious to see. Yeah, it's, <laughs> fan bias blinds people from. They don't. You gotta learn how to separate. Like you gotta know when to be a fan and when to be 
in the real world, bro. Right. <laughs> like, that a lot of times, right. A lot of times those don't get to overlap unless you are the fan of the team that is the best in the in any given sport at that time. Even then, you dig, bro, people win a chip and be like, This is the greatest championship level team in NBA history. I'm yeah, like, you're right. Right. Relax. <laughs> you're relax, right. bro. Like you get it, you get to talk, but like let's relax a little bit. Okay. Speak of speaking of relax. We going up another level in the oh, in this in the spice meter. Your boy, Benjamin Simmons. Hmm. We're not talking just like a career, you know, a rebound. Oh, nah. He he doubled and tripled down. He said he gonna be an all star. First team all defense. I thought- Lead the Nets to the playoffs. As a minimum top six seed, no plan. He needs to be drug tested. That's <laughs> crazy, bro. No, that's crazy. All right, let's run. Let's run through that again. Run through that again. You said all star. All star was the first one. All star. You said first team, first team all, team defense. all defense. If he's back, is- I can actually see the the first team all defense is probably the most realistic one. Right. If he's back, so like that's that's a hot. If he just said first team all defense, that'd be a hot take, and I'd be like, all right, cool. All right. <laughs> then you said lead the Nets to the playoffs. Lead the Nets. Lead. Like Mikael Jordan, not on the roster. Like, Brooklyn Bridges. Like what are you talking about, bro? Stop it, bro. That's Mikael Jordan. That's his team. Cut it out. But <laughs> top six seed, no less than that. Bro, Benson is – he don't even like basketball. So, like, <laughs> these, these are a lot of stuff. These are a lot of accolades I give to him for a guy that just wants to get paid and be famous, and that's it. He don't even really like playing basketball. In the 42 games he played last season, we're looking at seven points, six rebounds, six assists. All-star. He got – he had to make a jump. He would have to Crazy make a job. job. He would he just have he would have to go back to his old stats. I tell but you that's what, minimum, man. like gotta be 15, 16 points a game. Oh, yeah, for sure. He gotta look at the rim. He gotta look at the rim. He has to shoot the ball. Like I, I tell you what though, just off of just like me like seeing drama a little bit and for it to be hilarious, how good would it be or how funny would it be if like he really came back and really was just like a dog like he really wasn't i, I hope so because I, like, I was a ben simmons defender i used to really get into arguments with people who would be like bro how are you going he can't be good bro he doesn't shoot the ball i'm like he don't need to shoot the ball he's 6 10 one of the best defenders in the league he could get to the rim at will why need why why does he have to shoot like he could dunk on everybody until he saw Trey young and pass the ball so like <laughs> I, I can't really defend that anymore but Bro, I was a Ben Simmons defender for the longest. And so I really do hope he can at least get the defensive part back. If he don't ever go back to being the type of playmaker or finisher he was, like, tough. But like you said, I think the first team all de- all defense is the most reasonable of all the things that he put in this one hot take. 100, 100%. I had a question for you. What, what, what do you think would be more likely to happen? Um, let me double check his, his career stats. Okay. Ben Simmons makes three threes this year, or he makes an all-star, all-star team this year? Yo, three that's threes, so that's crazy. it. That is such a great like, – Yeah, he, he got five career, th- five that's... career threes. It's He's so a- crazy because the all-star one is probably more realistic <laughs> than him making three three-pointers. Yeah. In, t- in 2020, he did make three. He shot 10. He made three. 30%. And he tried to tell me he can't shoot, bro. 30%? <laughs> bro, this guy does not shoot the ball. I've ne- Bro, I've never seen something like this before in my life, bro. This guy just refuses to shoot the ball like i i don't get it i don't know but it's crazy because it wasn't like he didn't use to not shoot i really it's really got to be mental like there's no other explanation for it than he really just got to be in his head about it you so you remember the summer league highlights where he was midi midi like, a turnaround fadeaway like bro 
he was cooking, bro. Like, he had a little jump shot. Like, and that's the thing, too. You don't even need to shoot threes. Like, shoot, he doesn't even shoot mid ranges. Right. Like, he don't shoot nothing. People were literally standing in the, the almost at the restricted area when he used to bring the ball up the court. For, why I need to be any closer? You're not about to pull up. Even if you drive into the key, you're not about to pull up. You're literally coming here to dunk or lay the ball up. That is if it. He, if he had like a little mid range, it'd be so nasty. But he doesn't have to shoot the ball, the three ball. Like he right. literally doesn't have to do that. Like he'd be Sean Livingston on steroids, bro. Literally, literally. Sean Livingston, Sean Livingston with better playmaking, way better defense. That's not a slight to Sean Livingston. It's just Ben Simmons' defense is really like that. And better playmaking. Yeah. Like, what? Better finisher at the rim. <laughs> right. Like, man. Like, I saw the like, I, I, I always – I saw the hype with Ben Simmons. I wasn't really on that side. He always kind of rubbed me the wrong way because he stole – the rookie of the year for my man Donovan Mitchell. So I was always a Donovan Mitchell guy, you know what I mean. So I was always me and Ben always rubbed me the wrong way, but I I saw the potential, but I don't know. I I, I never was fully confident that he'd be like the next LeBron, like people were saying. Like I don't I didn't see that in him, but I definitely seen like if he liked basketball and worked on his game, he could have been multiple time All Star, All NBA. Like he could have been that type of guy. Yeah, he. So he still was an all star even without the jump shot. But Three time all star. Yeah, like he he still was nice even without working on his game. So imagine if he actually had that work ethic. He bro, sky was kind of the limit. To be honest. Mm-hmm. Three time all star, two time all defensive team, and he was all NBA one time. So. That's crazy from a guy who who scared of Trey Young. That's wild. <laughs> where do you, where do you think that play ranks in terms of like like when I think of. Just like not even memeable, just like funny or iconically bad NBA plays. That comes to mind. I'll tell you what is behind the the what's the name <laughs> the J.R. Smith <laughs> with the uh dribbling the ball the back out and LeBron's like <laughs> that's the one that, bro, that's gotta be like top two. That's gotta be top hey, two. That was up there. Brandon Knight. Oh, he, he got two. That could arguably be worse. Getting getting dropped by Kyrie in the the little the, the rookie rising stars game. game. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I could hear the commentator in my head. The <laughs> lob, the jam. <laughs> you know what's crazy? He got three. Cause you remember that? I don't. It was like a random game. It was like a regular regular season game. It was like a tie game. He had like a breakaway oh, smoked layup. The layup he right? smoked it. Yes, bro. He, he, bro. Got, the, he got the craziest low light mixtape <laughs> in NBA history, bro. Brandon Knight, bro. Oh my God. That's tough. That's he got the craziest low lights. Jesus Christ. I kind of feel bad, bro. Cause like, how do you always catch yourself in those situations? Because he's not a bad player. Brandon Knight wasn't like terrible. Like, no, he was, he was good. It's just those moments are forever going to last way longer than any of the other impact he actually had. That's crazy. Because that's all you You think of Brandon Knight, you think of him getting dunked on. Like, that's the right. first thing. That you might be the, the nastiest poster in NBA history. So, it's like, you, you're you forever going to be on the receiving end of that. That legit, like, when they say, like, body bag, like, that's the definition of body bag. Like, I genuinely thought he hurt his he hurt himself because like his back hit the ground so hard. I thought he was dead. <laughs> they two grown men jumped in the air. One of them hit the other in mid-air and landed flat, like immediately went horizontal, bro. Bro ran into a brick wall. I need to know like what his thought process was though, because like he's a Brandon Nice was six three, six four. DeAndre Jordan's seven foot. Like, what you thought you was about to do? I don't even know, bro. I mean, I, look, I said it up here before I say it again. I just would refuse to get dunked on. I take the fines, I'll take the ejections, suspensions, whatever. It's either that or you just gonna have a free dunk. I'm not getting put on a poster, bro. If I look in DeAndre, I know Chris Paul got the ball. This is the Lob City Clippers. What I think about to happen. Right. I see DeAndre Jordan rolling down the paint. I want no parts. And honestly, at Brandon Knight's size, what am I even do to DeAndre Jordan to stop him? I can't. That's what I'm if saying. If I grabbed him midair, he might just 
jump with me. I don't want. I want no parts. I'm stepping out of the way. It was nothing he could have did. It was just like that. Was, I don't know. I needed him to walk. He need to start a podcast and then and like walk, <laughs> walk us, us through, through that through moment. <laughs> like, what was you thinking? Like, oh, I need him. Actually, I need him to go on Jeff Teague podcast and do Facts. that because the two of Facts. them will probably chop it up and make that too good of a story, bro. Facts, bro. Brandon Knight, share your story, man. Share your side. <laughs> I bro, I really believe that for anybody that was on some of the like most disrespectful posters, like what was Jason Terry thinking? Bro, see three Heat players. I'm straight, bro. I'm walking out. Of the, I'm walking out. I'm walking out the baseline. I'm good. Yeah, he he got. But it's D Wade, Norris Cole, and LeBron, and they just ping ponging the ball he, around. <laughs> like, he got toy with that one was disrespectful. It was like they was just playing around, and then like he just ended with <laughs> like bro. I get it. I, I feel bad, though, because it's like, think about it. All the times people get posted, right? They're just trying to make the good basketball play. Right. Like some, every of, time. some of them are fair, though. Like, the one that, uh, like, Ja had on, like, Jaco Pertle or Like, even, anytime it's like a yeah, Which rim, one? <laughs> right. <laughs> but anytime it's like a rim protector or a big man, like, jumping, at least trying to contest it, you get, you get dunked on. It's like, that comes with the territory, right? If you're going to jump, mm-hmm. that happens. <laughs> The ones we're talking about, bro, they they didn't even make it to the dude's chest. Like they just <laughs> they just willingly got violated midair. That's just so disrespectful, bro. It's so disrespectful. Like, I'm, I'm like I'm seeing the Jason Terry one right now. It's just I feel so bad, but he had no chance. He, he literally no was lost. Nothing. He was lost, bro. Said, look this way, look left, look right. And then you just see <laughs> LeBron. The ball and LeBron is in the air. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. It's not happening. What you think is more disrespectful, getting dunked on like that, or like when LeBron jumped over John Lucas, like clean cleared him? I think getting dunked on is worse because, like, John Lucas, you could just be like, all right, that's a freak athlete. I'm just short. <laughs> like, that's just crazy. <laughs> but, like, getting dunked on, that means you went up with him, was like, oh, I got a chance to block it, and you got destroyed. So, like, I get jumped over way before I get dunked on. That's crazy. Okay, but what about the dude that uh, Vince Carter dunked over? Oh, the set wasn't he like seven the seven foot? footer? Cl- cleared him, bro. That's kind of I don't. The, get, I think getting dunked on is more disrespectful. That one is just crazy. Because you seven feel- foot two center Frederick Weiss, bro, cleared. Vince Carter is not human, bro. Nah, that's crazy. I th- I think you could also just chalk that up to like, bro, he's just a freak athlete, bro. That's just crazy. Like, could you imagine being 7 2 and being like, this dude really about to try to dunk on me from out here? Like, there's no way. I'm not even about to jump for this and just. And he cleared you. Nuts smacking you across the forehead. <laughs> like, yeah, it's no way, bro. It's no way. Bro, that is too crazy, bro. Oh I my just... God. I just watched it. Like, you see it calling it the dunk of death. I never heard it called that before, but that's fire. That's OD. That's OD. He tried to take a charge. Oh my! Right, he's seven two. If you don't get in the air, bro, right, he should have jumped. But that if he jumped, though, that'd have been an even a crazier poster. Because mm-hmm. like he, even he's seven two. Even if he jumped, he was not getting higher than Vince Carter. Absolutely, he not. just wasn't. Like, and yo, that's, all right. that's young. Vince had hair. That's right. young Vince Carter, bro. How about this? How about this? Would 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 you rather jump as high as Vince Carter? Or be able to shoot as good as not. I'm not even gonna say Steph because like Steph is like the best in the world. But yeah. Like, or just be like an elite level shooter, like a Clay Thompson, Ray Allen, those type of guys. Vince Carter. Vince Carter would just be more fun. Like, it, it, this is right. This is my reasoning. A, way more fun. Way more fun. Two, is I can use the application of the hops in multiple things. I go on, go to a pickup game, start banging on everybody. I go to the football fields. Hey, I'm on <laughs> head taps on everybody. I'm in seven <laughs> on seven going crazy. Fair enough. So I, I would I would take the hops because it's like I feel like being an elite shooter would be cool, but it would really be nothing like pulling up at the park and just looking like a normal dude, and then they find out you got like a 48-inch vertical. <laughs> I'm gonna say actually, yeah, do, being jumping. As high as Vince Carter while being like a normal sized guy. Right. Be, that's ridiculous. Like, that's, that's like crazy. 
I imagine that's had to be what it felt like for the first time somebody was like saw Spud Webb dunk. You'd be like, nah, get, take them shoes off, bro. What's right. in there? Right? <laughs> What's in them shoes, bro? It's no way. This dude is five foot five and he's dunking on a 10 foot rim. Reverse. <laughs> Yeah, like he's up there. Like he's not like just rim grazing. Like he gets up there. That's crazy. I don't know if that gets talked about enough, bro. It really don't. Bro won the dunk contest at five foot six. That's crazy. Nah, bro. That's crazy. Shout out Spud Webb, bro. Five six one thirty three played in the NBA. Hey man, Muggsy Bogue was like five two playing playing against that Gordon is- them. It was like giving people business, bro. See, that's that's what I don't get too when people try to compare eras. Like so and so couldn't last in this era. Like, bro, Muggsy Bug was five two, and he could last. <laughs> so we he could played, last. In that he era. played twelve years. That's like, crazy. come on, bro. <clears throat> Talking about Damn. LeBron couldn't play in the eighties. We got a Muggsy. five five three dude averaging twelve points a night. On, <laughs> right. Now. Come on now. Oh man. Let's get let's get through the last couple of these hot takes um before we get into the Western Conference standings for this upcoming season. The next one I have here. Let me see. Let me find a good one. Ooh, it's gonna this is about to bring your bias into question. Your this guy's prediction is that the 2023 24 NBA MVP will be none other than Los Angeles Laker Anthony Davis. Hey man, hey man, I can see it happen. I could, I can see it happening. Nah, let me. I, I don't think he's gonna play enough games. I don't think what's the cutoff is, again? Is it 65? 65. That's a lot of games, bro. I don't think he's going to play enough games, and I don't think he's going to be consistent enough. That's the thing. Mm. Like, talent-wise, absolutely. Anthony Davis could be an MVP. He, Anthony Davis is an MVP caliber player. He always he's at his MVP best. Caliber caliber player. Player. That's what I'm saying. But, like, he just he gets hurt a little bit too much. He's going to get nicked up at some point in the season. And the way we're probably going to do it now, we're probably going to – like, our team is better than it was last year, at least the beginning mm. of last year. And like we're like first seed MVPs, like none of that stuff's really gonna matter. Like it's preserving until the playoffs. So like I can't really see him going out and being like, nah, I want to win the MVP this year. Cause hey, if he wins MVP this year, that means he played a lot of games. That means his body's probably gonna break down in the playoffs. I'd rather you be there for the playoffs <laughs> than for winning the MVP, if I'm being honest. But talent wise, I ain't mad at it. Definitely ain't mad at it. Keeping it with the Lakers. Really, your boy, Austin Reeves. Not only is he going to win most improved player, according to this Twitter user, he's going to be an all-star. I'm with it. Let's go. Let's do okay. it. Lock it in. Lock it in. I'm with it. I'm cool with that. I'm Man. definitely cool with that. Now, who wait, who votes for the all-stars again? Is it the coaches or is it like fans? Because if it's fans, it's, a, it's he, a mix. It's a mix. He, bro, any, he Alex Caruso was up in the fan votes. He's just obviously not getting no, none of the none of the player or coaches votes, <laughs> bro. They, bro, honestly though, because I I can see Austin Reeves averaging a smooth, like what do you what do you average in the playoffs or like the second half of the season? I need to pull that up because he can average around 16, 18. I can see him doing that, like that. Like after he developed, like after like LeBron was out. And he got the, he had the ball in his hands a lot more, and like you just see the development. Like he was scoring around that amount every single night. Like he had a couple big games, he had high twenty point games. Like he's a really good player. And then mm-hmm. that, along with the fact that he's getting hyped up, the fact that he's hooping with the FIBA team, like I could see it. It's very unlikely, but I could definitely see it. Like I could see the Lakers having three All Stars. I could I could see that. I tell you, you see, what. you see how fast the switch up. Been on Twitter after he had one bad game in the World Cup, bro. Bro, it's like, and I can't even just say NBA because it's just sports in general. The fact that like a guy is so liked by like just his fans, like Lakers right. fans and stuff, the people that, like, that's supposed to like him, right? And it's like you look at that and be like, nah. I hate him. Like, right. what? Like, he didn't, bro. 
undrafted guy, had to work his way up, like had to really grind and improve at every level when people try to discredit him. Like, I right, know nah, he he got like a Lynn Sandy run. This is a good like week or two when Bron is out. He's really not that good. Going to the playoffs, hooping in the playoffs. Why is he on the FIBA team? Why is he on Team USA? He's not that good. Goes over there, hooping. Like, he's just a good player. Like, why, right. like, why do people hate it so much? But it is what it is, bro. When you're doing good and, like, a lot of people love you, there's going to be people that just hate you for no reason. And, hey, I saw somebody say this, and I, I, I'm i not saying it's true, but I'm saying it just correlates. Austin Reeves play good, we win. Austin Reeves play bad, Team USA lose. Sound like he yeah. carrying the team. That's what it sounds like to me. That sounds like he carrying the team. That's, uh, that's Hey, that sounds like it's him and Ant Edwards, and that's it. If, if he play bad, they lose. Hey, they was getting – Sprayed up by Lithuania, like bad, bad. I didn't watch it, but I just heard it was bad. Yeah, I caught, I caught the second half of it, and they had already it was, they was down to like seventeen at halftime. Damn, and it was just like, bro, these dudes was the contest just didn't matter. They was pulling everything and knocking them down. Anthony Edwards was, he was trying, he put up like 32, 33 or something. Um. It just was like too little, too late. They just couldn't cut it to like under four or five points. But you know yeah. what they need? They need their actual guys that should be getting some of this slack to step up. What is Brandon Ingram doing? He ain't played one good game yet. Struggling, bro. He ain't played one good game yet. But we worry about Austin Reeves. Like, bro, he's not even supposed to be, you know, second <laughs> option out here. He's supposed, to, he's supposed to come in and give you some good minutes. Like, he's not supposed to be no, oh, if he don't score 15, we lose. Like, what? We're we're bi at we're like we're Mikel Jordan. I need all these guys to step up. We can't just be the Anthony Edwards, Austin Reeves show, right? Um, but it's like what you said. I feel like, bro, it almost goes bigger than it's bigger than basketball, it's bigger than football. It might be bigger than sports. Like, <laughs> as soon as something gets popular or it's like liked by a, a large enough group of people oh yeah for sure. it's like a group spawns <laughs> immediately and they have to hate it they just gotta hate it bro bro have you seen like like this happens with like say like streamers like i seen it happen with like kaisa that like it will like got all oh, people all love them underdog story cool once he got like up here how could y'all watch his streams he's not even funny like i was like bro where did <laughs> Where did the hate come from? Or just right. not even hate, just people in general, music, artists, everything. Yeah, like right. Anything that someone can have an opinion on, if it's a large group of people that enjoy it, immediately it has to be hated. And loud, with, like loudly hated too. Like people got to be loud about it. It's so, it's with everything, bro. Everything. If somebody liked this too much, like there's going to be people that's just like, nah, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. And it'd be grown people. It did be grown people. Because I ain't gonna lie, like, as a kid, like, trying to be different sometimes. Like, I was like that as a kid a little bit. Like, I remember there was, like, certain, like, artists everybody loved. And I was like, I'm gonna be different. Like, I don't, I don't like them that much. <laughs> but, like, as a grown adult, like, that's weird. Like, you can't just, don't just be a hater just to be a hater. That's mad weird. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I got a music hot take. But we'll, we'll save that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're gonna finish up this section with... Definitely one of the hottest takes. I think this one is fitting to end on. This man said that the Suns went out and traded for KD. They brought in Bradley Beal. They got rid of CP3. They still got DeAndre Ayan. Brought all of this super team talent together and are only going to make the play in. The play in, damn, that's said hit their ceiling is the seventh seed. That's crazy. That's that's the craziest one up here by <laughs> far. That's, that's, say, that's why I say that one for last. I was like, whoa, that's the craziest one up here by far. Like, and that's all, all I can see based off his profile is he's a coach fan. So, I I don't even know where that's no, coming from. Right. No, no bias. I don't know. He has to have like some player bias or something. He got to. He got to like hate KD or hate Booker or something like that. Cause I, no. I, I don't think they're going to live up to the expectation that's being set. Me neither. 
playing team, bro. Playing is crazy. That's wildly different disrespectful. Unless you say like KD and Bill are hurt the whole season. But even then, it's like we're predicting injuries. Like right, that's not injuries. even a hot take. That's not yeah. Like if you can say about any team, if they they're two two of their three best players get hurt, they're gonna suck. Like okay, like, you can say it about anybody, but nah, there's, there's no chance their ceiling is the seventh seed. I think they'll be one of those teams where regular season they win mad games off of just talent. Right. Like they're gonna win a bunch of games just off of the fact that they just have three superstars. But literally, yeah. <laughs> like. Seven seed is crazy. That's yeah. that's a wow. Yeah, that's definitely by far the craziest take up here. And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm deep in this thread that I had because bro, I'm talking to all y'all NBA fans out there. Some of y'all are delusional with what some of these takes are. I know this is under a thread for y'all specifically to get some hot takes off, but like, bro. Derek White will make the All Star team, and Jalen Brown won't. Right, what huh? are we talk- what are from we a about? from a Celtics fan, huh? What are, what are we even talking about anymore? Somebody said Trey Young has and will continue to have a better career than Luka Doncic. Has has right. Last right? I checked, they both made it to the same level in the the uh, playoffs. One of them do got more first team All NBAs than the other one. I one of them know. is in trade talks, and the other one is not. I don't. And <laughs> well, like I, we've one defended it. Coach fired. <laughs> right. Yeah, and we've defended Trey Young, but like yeah. Yeah. to say he's clearly having a better career, and then will continue to have a better career. That's that's a little wild. See, that's what I'm saying. Like fans, like. In his mind, like he believes that, like he he will do anything to get people to think that yo Trey Young is way better than Luca. Like we we, that's a fleece. Like what we got Trey Young, they only got Luca. That's a fleece. Like fan, but I'm telling you, fans are crazy, bro. Fans are wow. It's nuts. Nikola Vucevic reg- becomes an All Star again, and the Bulls are a three seed. All right, yeah, we can end this segment, bro. <laughs> we can just end this now, bro. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. If you y'all are talking about, we just see like, all right, that's not even hot takes. We just saying stuff, right? That's what I I like a hot take that it's like you you going against the grain for me. You 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 making a bold prediction. Well, I, if I just came up here and I was like, yo, I think Jared Vanderbilt about to win MVP next year. Yeah, like that's not a hot take. L- L- Lakers Nation bleed 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 purple and gold. <laughs> Like, it's not a hot take. You You're just, just sound stupid. Stuff. Like, you're just <laughs> saying stuff. And you just, for clicks, it's funny. You sound like Stephen A. Smith or Skip Bayless, bro. Come on now. We're better than this. We're better than this. That's crazy. Uh, quick pivot over to predicting the Western Conference records for this upcoming season. So, I have FanDuel Sportsbook pulled up. Not a sponsor, but you could be. Hit me up. Um, and have all of every single Western Conference teams over under regular season wins pulled up in front of me. And we're going to go through based on the standings from last year. And you want to go top to bottom or bottom to top? So you're going to start with the Nuggets or the Spurs? Uh, we can go top to bottom, I guess. We can do that. Okay. So let's start with the Nuggets. So the Nuggets <laughs> last year, obviously the defending champions, They won 53 games last year. The over-under for them right now is 53 and a half. So will the Nuggets win 54 games next year? They only got to be one game better. Under. Under. I think they don't have no reason. They don't have nothing to prove. They don't have no reason to, like, want to go out and be the first seed. I think they're they're a team that Mm -hmm. they can beat a three, four seed and still win the championship. So it's like. That's fair. I like they've proven that they could beat you home away. Like they don't. I I just think that they don't care enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean the only way, not only way, but the one thing that could that one in, that made me want to say over is the fact that Jokic doesn't miss games unless he's like resting mm-hmm. for like later in the season. But like he doesn't get hurt. Like he doesn't miss games. So like off of the strength of his talent alone, they might win that many games. Yeah. But I, I would say under. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know he don't miss games. You see, he was playing last year with look like he got attacked by a tiger, bro. Those scratches yeah. on his arm. What he getting into in, a, in his spare time, bro? 
Jokic don't. He from where is he from? Serbia. Serbia. Yeah, they don't play. <laughs> hey, bro, you seen? He went back to back. He won an NBA championship. Went to Serbia, and his horse winning races, bro. <laughs> he's really he's like up. that. Oh, he's, he's up right now. He having a year of his life, bro. He's up. He right having now. a year of his life. No what? Don't let them win the chip again. He can retire. <laughs> right, he going out. On, that's a three beat. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> He, he, he gonna mess around, retire in the NBA, go back to Serbia, get another horse racing championship. And he gonna beat Jordan. Nobody, <laughs> dude's not going back for. Did Bill Russell even get four in a row? He had I eleven. Was, that'd be crazy if it was just like chip. Right. It's like he won eleven. That'd be crazy if he was just like two chips break, two chips break. Like he had to win like mad in a row. Yeah. Um. Moving on to the second team in the West last year, the Memphis Grizzlies. They have fifty-one wins. FanDuel has their line set at a lot lower, over under 46 and a half wins for the Grizzlies this year. Under. I would say under two. That Josh suspension is going to hurt. Yeah. For unless, sure. unless <laughs> Desmond Bain, top 20, he better than Ja, according to Bro Bro on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the only way it's going to be over. <laughs> But nah, yeah. I'm, I'm going under that job. I'm, I'm pretty I'm comfortably under. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, definitely. Okay, next one we got is the Kings, one of the healthiest teams last year. Um, they had 48 wins last season. They're set on FanDuel right now at 44 and a half over under regular season wins for the Kings. You said what's that? What's their what they said at 44 and a half, so over under 45 wins. Hmm. They won 48 last year. I say over. I I, I say over. Because Grizzlies is gonna lose some games that they were they they won last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I say over. Because their players are only gonna get better too. Their players are young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keegan Murray's gonna get better. I, right. I say over. I say over for Keegan Murray development. De'Aaron Fox is him. Sabonis is much better in the regular season than the postseason. Yeah. Davion um, Mitchell's still young. He can improve. Mm-hmm. Like they got they got some young players. Okay. Moving down to the four seed last year. That was the Phoenix Suns. So you know how they retooled their roster, got themselves a super team now. They are projected at 52 and a half wins. Ooh. Damn. So, if, they, if you go over, you're basically saying they would have been tied with the Nuggets for the one seed this past year. I don't think they're gonna be that healthy though. I don't even think health matters. I think it's going to be a like a coast situation where it's like, well, we got the talent. As long as they get enough games in where they get the chemistry, it's like we could be the we could be in the plane. Not saying that they're going to be in the plane, but it's like you could mm-hmm. be in the plane and be like comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I I, I say under because like yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to be stressing the one seed like that. Right. Like one seed to me are like we haven't done it yet. Teams like yeah, we got something to prove. We want to win all these games and win the championship. That, that's that's what one seeds are to me. Or like teams that win like fifty some games. Unless y'all are just like overly talented to where like you just win fifty games off the strength that you're just better than everybody. Mm-hmm. Next team we got was the five seed last year, which was the Clippers. They won forty four games. FanDuel has them around the same spot, over under forty six and a half. Mm, under they always hurt. That's one team I can always count on to get hurt. Under and they they definitely a team that don't care about regular season standing, bro. Exactly. Yeah, I go under. I okay. nah. six seed last year. The Golden State Warriors also have forty four wins. They're projected forty eight and a half. Under, I can see a world. Where you about to say? You about playing. to say? Oh, I would have taken a step further. I see a world they miss. Like and that's what when we talking about. I was like, I might have a couple hot takes of my own. I didn't know if I wanted. If I honestly, if I just had the balls to say it, I really didn't know if I had the balls to say it. But I, my hot take was gonna be, I can see them missing the playoffs. Right. Look, because the, the last time they were in the plan, they did miss the playoffs. Yeah. LeBron saw three rims and he hit the right one. <laughs> like, just, like the way the way I see it, I just think. All right, let's just look at it from. This, I'm just looking at the standings right now. Mm-hmm. Denver, I have them over them. Sacramento, Suns, mm-hmm. Clippers is, I, I guess, whatever. 
the Talks Clippers are, yeah. because they and they win games when their players aren't there anyways. Like when Kawhi and Paul George aren't there anyway. Yeah. The Lakers are definitely gonna have a better record than them mm-hmm. this season. I can see oh Dallas. I can see Dallas being better right. than them. Pelicans um, if Zion Pelican. is healthy. The Pe- Thunder, right? Because like, like in, if you look at it right, now, we're right there. We're like six, seven teams deep, so we're in the plan minimally. Exactly. Like and then right now it's like even the way it finished last year, bro. They had two. They had four more wins than the temp seed. Like they weren't like way better than the teams that missed, right. and they're only getting older. They added Chris Paul, which they're I getting don't older even... and smaller. Sound like a like a like an elderly person for real. <laughs> like <Literally>. you're shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> older, smaller, slower. Like I just I don't like it. Like their yeah. best play, their best players, their dynasty type players, or that help contribute to the dynasty are getting older and worse. Like I, I can see a world where they miss. Yeah, and that would be crazy because it like it's it, it wouldn't be due to Steph Curry not trying, right? That'll be the narratives that get spun up because that even happened the last time and they missed the playoffs. But it's like it's definitely not going to be due to a lack of him trying or a lack of performance from him. But I really just think that roster is they had they had this was their off season to make that choice and they made the choice. We both think it's the wrong one, but. At least they were definitive and picked a path and got Jordan Poole out. They still brought in somebody Draymond got beef with, but I guess you know, I don't think he's going to punch CP3. Um, I, hey, who, I don't know. He might. CP3 he better chill because, bro, he punched CP3. Cliff Paul, you know, he might keep that thing on him. <laughs> you know, like a good neighbor, Cliff Paul. <laughs> I wouldn't play with that. What I, what I will say, too, is like, bro, that team sucked on the road last year. And, like, what's going to change? What changed? Like, are you going to be like, oh, yeah, they just had a bad – it was just a bad, like, energy around the team from the Jordan Poole stuff. Like you said, you're bringing in somebody Draymond don't like too. Like, he don't like Chris Paul either. When are we going to find out if Chris Paul is starting or not? That's what I, I want. I want to hear that press conference. <laughs> somebody – next time Steve Kerr go, like, after a World Cup game, I don't want to hear nothing. Like, somebody just need to ask him, is Chris Paul starting this year? <laughs> put, put the mic right in his face. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know the answer right now. Man, yeah. If y'all are rolling out Chris Paul, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, I'm not moved. I'm not moved. That lineup sucks. It's I'm no, be honest, that lineup it's sucks. no disrespect to them, like their greatness as their like in terms of their careers and what they've done. Right now, in the year of 2023, I'm not moved. <laughs> I'm not moved at all. That lineup is not scaring me, not one bit. Yeah. Not one, so yeah, I could say I could see a world they miss. Mm-hmm. Let's go to let's go to your team, the Lake Show, forty three win team last year. They was putting it together down the stretch. Now they're gonna have a full off season with their retooled roster that they redid at the trade deadline. FanDuel only has them at forty seven and a half wins, so only was that four wins more. Oh, that's five over, five wins more than last year. Oh, that's over then. Cause we so you basically saying they were gonna be a fifty win team? Yeah, I think we could just do that off the strength of just being better than teams, and I don't think that's I I don't think like I don't think we're gonna try to win mad games like mm-hmm. as far as just be like a one seed and like do all that. I don't think we're gonna do that. Like the focus is gonna be the playoffs. But if we won forty three and we, bro, we started the year basically after the All Star break. Like, yeah, if you give us a full season. Like I think we could win that many games. That's fair. I can see that. I can see that. Okay. Next one we got is the Timberwolves, 42 wins last season. They're set at 44 and a half. I'm not going to lie. As much as I do want to take the over, as long as Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns are on the same team, I will be taking the under. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the double bigs, man. I'm not. Uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go under. I I, I, I kind of want to take the over. I really do, but I'm with you. I don't think that that's gonna work. Like I just don't like the double bigs, bro. It's not. It's Rudy. not it. <laughs> Definitely not Rudy. One of them and, it, Rudy? and it's sick because Nas Reed would be such a good fit next to either of. Just you gotta get rid of one, bro. You gotta get rid of one. It just sucks because you have to get rid of Cat. You cannot trade Gobert. Like yeah. you're locked in to go bear now. You can't trade him. Cause like I think you could like 
you could build a good enough defensive team around Cat being at your five. I think you yeah, could do that. You could. Like, you already got McDaniel. So, like, that's what I'm saying. You, you a big part of the way there. You got him. You got Ant. Like, that's, I would say that's solid, pieces. bro. But Rudy, it's like, I don't know what the perfect team around Rudy is. I'll be honest. I don't know what the perfect team around Rudy Four All Stars. <laughs> yeah, that's what it got to be, bro. <laughs> I need I elite play from everybody else. Uh, but minimally, like, you need four people who can legitimately not even just space the floor, but that has to be like they all have to be perimeter players. He doesn't, he can't play with nobody else that needs to be hitting the paint consistently or even really live in the mid range. Like, mm -hmm. he needs to be paired consistently with people who play on the perimeter. So, like, even if it's like you playing some small ball lineup one through four, it's like you guy might be a three or maybe even a fringe two going down to the four. Like, it would have to be something like that. And they all need to be at least average on terms of perimeter defense, but you need like one or two legit wing stoppers. He'd have been solid on them. Uh, he'd have been nice on them old Warriors teams. Like replace him, yeah. Like, like Bogut, <laughs> take <laughs> Zaza nice. out. We got yeah. go bear. Yeah, it'd have been nice there, but nah. you could have put Perkins on that team. They still win it. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Man, you could he ain't really there. saying much. <laughs> nah. <laughs> exactly. That's what. But that's what I'm saying. Like it needs to be that level of team for me to be like, okay, I could see Rudy yeah. there. Like I can't see him nowhere else. You think he gonna he gonna turn into a little stretch five this year though? Hell no. <laughs> I don't think he could. No, I don't, Rudy can't make a layup. I, I'm, I'm not banking on nothing. He's developing offensively, bro. Rudy needs to work on making layups and getting the post and Does catching he, the basketball. He's never made a three in his career. How many has he shot? Fourteen. He stinks. <laughs> Rudy might be the one guy in the league where I'm like legitimately a hater. <laughs> like he stinks. <laughs> hey, you, you not alone. There's a lot of other people out there that are with you. But it's either you love Rudy or you hate him, and majority of them are like hate Rudy. Like it's not a lot of I don't know a lot of Rudy stands. I don't. I wouldn't even say it's Rudy stands as much as it's just like defenders. Like dudes are just like <laughs> y'all hating on him, and like I I I see where you're coming from. <laughs> he do be protecting that rim though. Like let's not discredit that. That's everyone's like, argument. Like everyone's argument starts off the same. I see where you're coming from. But <laughs> we know if you know ball, bro, it's, it's y'all not lying, bro. He he don't got an offensive bag, bro. No At post all. moves. If he is not setting a screen and standing in the dunker spot, net negative, bro. He's not doing nothing on the offensive side of the ball. But and rebounding, rebounding too. I mean, I discredit the rebounding, but other than that, he's not a threat to score if it's not really off a lob or a very free pick and roll, bro. Mm -hmm. And if it's not it's explicitly at the rim, he's also chicken on defense. <laughs> also, like he is a very he's good at one to two very specific things. So trash. <laughs> he's so trash. Uh, go on to the next team. We got the Pelicans, who also came out at forty-two wins last year. They are projected at 44 and a half on FanDuel. So you're taking the over or under on that one. I take the over because I think this might I, I, I think this is the year Zion puts it together. I think it is too. So I would take the over as well because we talked about it, bro. When Zion is there, the West better be careful, bro. And they already got beef with the Suns. Cool. I'd like to see. I'd like to see those games healthy. Those I'd like guys. to see a seven game series of that healthy. I need. I need. Brazilian, just give me one year, bro. Just give me one year of sixty five games, and I'm then a fully lie. healthy full season run. Why are there no good rivalries in the East right now? Like I can't think of one. One that's like I look at the West. Right, you got Memphis and Golden State. You've got Phoenix and Dallas. You got Phoenix and the Pelicans. Are you always gonna have Clippers, Lakers? I know why. Why? Because all the pop, all the most popular media players are in the West. Think about the best player in the East, Giannis. Not really. 
I mean, media wise, like no his matter. his biggest rivalry is with a ladder. Yeah, facts for real though. <laughs> like you got Jason Tatum is the most popular player in the East. I mean, maybe James Harden, but he's older now, so that don't really count. But like Joel Embiid, the only rivalry he would have would be with Jokic, and that's chalk. That's his, done for. His rivalry is with the conference finals, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no. <laughs> It's no they big, rivals I mean, not with teams out east. They got rivals with random things, bro. <laughs> Literally, like miscellaneous things. There's no yeah. actual team for a team. The only thing you yeah. can say is Miami, Boston. Because That's they fair. That's fair, yeah. Um, even like when the Celtics go at it with my, with the Bucks, like that's not a rivalry though. Like they just have good some good series. Yeah. But, All the I mean, other ones that I named, there'd be some off the court like drama yeah, that saying. goes into it. Yeah. It could be like a. Uh, like Trey Young versus the Knicks, but that's he, always uh, yeah song. okay yeah. But that's other true. than that, I don't know. It's, it's not much. Ain't nothing really cooking in the East. Trey Young forever is going to be a New York villain. I don't know how he feels about it. I love that for him, bro. I would that's, capitalize on that so much. I like it for him just for the fact that he doesn't fold in that moment too. Like mm-hmm. he thrives off of that. Like if he would, if he was folded off of it, I'd be like, damn, all right, y'all bully him now. Right. <laughs> you know, I've got to relax, but nah, it's gonna fuel him. He only plays better. But it's really insane, like the chokehold that he has on New York sports fans. Like dudes be at Mets games talking about F Trey Young. Like, sir, this is the wrong sport. Like <laughs> this is this is baseball. Like he really a series that happened. Almost three years ago now at this point has still got living in y'all's head rent free, bro. Crazy. And he violated y'all, t- took a bow on the logo in New York. Like this a Broadway show. Man. That was so cool. Trey Young, bro. St- stop the disrespect, bro. 26 and 10, and he can't even get an all-star. Come on. Had a better career than Luca. That's what bro said. <laughs> better career than Luca. I, mean, I need the Hawks to turn back up. I need them to turn back up. Um, next team we got, and I can already tell you, we both probably going to take the over, is the Oklahoma City Thunder. They won 40 games last year. They're over under a set at 44 and a half. So what you got for Chet and Shea and Giddy? I say over. I'm taking over as well. I think – Yeah. The Thunder are going to be nasty this year, bro. Like I said, bro, you're plugging in a guy who does exactly to the T what you need for your team. Mm-hmm. Like, to the T. So, I just think. They was running without a center last year. That's what I'm saying. Off the strength of that alone, that's good for five more wins. Right. If not more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Next one, we got Dallas Mavericks. They tanked out the last game of the season so they could miss the playoffs. So they finished at 38 wins. Their over under is also set at 44 and a half. Hmm. I think they're going to be good. I feel like everybody having 40 wins is a little tough, though. 44 wins. That is true. Hmm. I think the Mavericks would have to do it, though, especially after last year. And it's like they did – we gave them credit. They did address a lot of those needs yeah. in the draft and free agency, which was like, again, they needed wings. They needed defense. They needed big man presence. They went out and got all three, either between the draft with Derek Lively or bringing in guys like Grant Williams. Um, just like you pair all of that with what we already knew to be a lethal backcourt combo in Luka and Kyrie, like – I'm moved. I'm intrigued. I think hopefully well, they, they got to at least get to like 45 wins just for the Mark Cuban sanity. I, yeah, I was about to say, like, I I think they win 44 games, like on the dot, like 44 mm-hmm. or 45. So it's like yeah. over ish. <laughs> I think it's literally on that, that, that dot right there. They at least have to make the playoffs, bro. Because if, oh, yeah. the if they miss the playoffs two years in a row, I'll start the narrative. Let's start. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation, bro. Luca, Luca can't get them to the playoffs. Let's have, <laughs> let's have the conversation. Now nah, he misses two times in a row. It's, it's up. We gonna have yeah. to have the talk. We we definitely gonna have to have that conversation because Trey Trey Young be getting dudes to the playoffs. 
<laughs> this is the nastiest narrative ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, going to the last four teams we got here, you got the Utah Jazz, who started off last season really strong and really were in it down to about the last week or so. Um, they finished out with 37 wins. They're over under on FanDuel is lower than last year at 35 and a half. Under. Interesting. I say under. I think they overachieved a little bit. They probably did. I guess they didn't really make no now moves to get that's better. What, that's what I'm saying. Like nothing really changed. I feel like they overachieved a little bit, and I feel like the people in the conference has gotten better. The teams of the conference. Okay. Like they started off hot. Like I don't think they're doing that again. Like Lori, I think Lori's legit though. Like I think he's gonna stay playing at that level. And they got some solid players, but I think mm-hmm. they definitely overachieved as far as wins, in my opinion. Yeah. That's fair. Um, next team we got here is the Portland Trail Blazers. They had 33 wins last season. Um, their projection on FanDuel is Oh my trim, why are they not on the list? <laughs> they don't want to put it out yet. They don't know if Dame getting traded. No, I really think that's what it is, bro. Uh, it might not fan the sports books be sports like books not slick. Oh, they're not well, trying, they're not trying to give you a free, you know what I mean? Like free bet. I was, I was tripping. I'm like Orlando, Phoenix, Philly, Sacramento. How we get to the S's? I'm like, <laughs> oh think, well. They're probably not gonna put it out, but the day he gets traded, like they will put it out. Guaranteed. Well, then, shoot. Over, uh, they had 33 wins last year. They're going to have more or less, you think? Under. You think they're going to get to 30? Uh, this is, they might not. This could be a sub-25. This could be a sub-20 win this, team. This team could be really bad. They're and, like, that could be great. They're going to be fun. They're going to be fun, though. Like, because the, you know, the Pistons was, was fun when Cave was hooping. Like, you know? Yeah, they could be fun. The Rockets was fun to watch at at times. Those are very low win teams. <laughs> they could be fun and garbage at the same time. Yep. All right, and let's go to the Rockets. They were had twenty two wins last year. They are projected on FanDuel over under thirty one and a half. I, I might still take the. Under. I thought she was gonna say like 28. <laughs> I was thinking that too. 30, 31 and a half is like you they have to get 10 more wins than last season. I was about to say, I don't know if they got that. I think that they could maybe better. get to 30, but 32, 33 is like I think we're pushing it a little bit. Yeah, it, I yeah, that's they still good. a couple years out from really making some noise like that. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go under. I don't think they're like 10, 11 wins better. I don't okay. think they're that much better. Last team we got is the San Antonio Spurs, who also came in at 22 wins last year. They're sitting at 28 and a half this, uh, this year on FanDuel. So you got over under 20 and a half for Wemby and the Spurs. I'll still say under. I don't think they're going to win. I don't think they're going to be that good. That's another one where I feel like it can go either way, and it's like they're gonna finish at like twenty seven or like twenty nine. Yeah, like it's right there. But yeah. I, I in those situations, I feel like the under is the safer bet. I would I would probably go with the under too. Okay, well that's it. That's the full full Western Conference uh, over under on their regular season wins. I like for, that for the Western Conference. We'll go through the Eastern Conference the next episode. We're going to wrap up today's episode. You brought up this idea, so you got it all set up. So we're going to be doing a head-to-head NFC East draft. How how are we setting this up? How are we doing the players? See, that's what I, that's what I was talking about or thinking about. We could do – we could do, like, obviously, you know, quarterback, running back, two receivers, tight end. Do you want to just do offense? Well, yeah, no, we're doing just offensive line. We're not doing – Guard tackle, nah. You gonna oh, smoke me? Trying. You gonna smoke me? I'm admitting <laughs> it right now. You gonna smoke me in that? I don't no, know. No, we, we right. could do full O line. We could do full O line. We could do full D line. Or we, honestly, let's do full O line, front seven, and DBs. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm cool with that. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. Let me set up in the docks. Mm. Okay. I like this. I like this. And you, I, I'll give you the first pick. You have it. We could do do it like a little like a snake draft. Okay. 
do it like that. So we got quarterback, two receivers, running back, tight end, O line, front seven, and then DBs. Okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. I'm about to take an O line with the first pick. No, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, you take <laughs> you have a little bit of an advantage. Uh, this is NFC um, East. Well, I might take a front seven though. Hmm. Hmm. With the first pick, I'll play it safe. Give me. I'll take Jalen. Jalen Hurts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let me... Oh, let me get one something. Let me, let me make it sure I got your team up here, too. Cheever. You want to do the intro for the TikTok? Oh, yeah, let's get that right. <laughs> it's going to be mid-podcast. Right. Literally. Let's do a head-to-head -head draft with current NFC East players. Mm, wow. Fire. Mm, 30,000 views right there. OD off the intro alone. <laughs> All right, so you got your first pick is Jalen Hurts. You want me to redo the pick with the high intensity? <laughs> if you want, you don't got to. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Why is it so quiet? Hold on. It was bad love. <laughs> With the first pick, I'm gonna take Jalen Hurts. Okay, okay, I like that. I like that. Oh, okay, okay. So we got a bunch of different options here. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna go. This is tough. This is this is tough, man. This is tough. I'm going to go front. Nah, I was about to go front seven. I can't do it. I can't do it. I thought about it. I almost did. I, I, bro, I, bro, I'm going to go A.J. Brown. I'm going to go A.J. Brown. I'm going to okay. get my guy. I like A.J. That's my guy. You got back to back. Oh, oh, then I might go front seven. <laughs> <laughs> I might do it. Or, matter of fact, nah, we're going we gonna to hold it down. Give me the Eagles offensive line. Ooh, okay, okay. Then I'm going to go give me Saquon at running back. Okay, okay. And then we do two receivers, right? Yeah. You got AJ. And then give me CD at my first receiver slot. Okay. Yo, a, a Jalen Hurts Saquon backfield. Imagine that in real life. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's insane. That's, <laughs> that's, that's actually insane. That, that read up is terrifying, bro. That's insane. So give me the give me the Give me the Cowboys front seven. Mm, give, me, okay. give me the boys. Give me the boys front seven. Yo, I got the Eagles O line, the Cowboys D line. We, man, we winning in the trenches right now. Mm -hmm. Let me get. Let me get. Who? Man, give me, give me Terry McLaurin. I knew he was gonna do that. I was <laughs> thinking scary, I could Terry. hold off one more line. One more give round. me scary Terry. Dang. Okay. Then give me – I'm going to do the Cowboys O-line. Okay. And then give me the Commanders front seven. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's definitely a good one. I like that. I like that. So I, I need a running back. I need a tight end. I, I'll save my QB for last. And let me get – and I need DBs too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking through the DBs right now. I'm trying to think which one is best. We ain't saying nothing. Oh, you said Saquon. I'm about to say, we ain't saying nothing, Giants. I do need a running back, though. Who left? Tony Pollard. Rob Pollard, Gifton. Swift, Penny. I'm straight. Give me give me Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard going to hold it down for me. Mm -hmm. And then DBs-wise, I'm just trying to think off top. This is safeties and corners, too. Mm-hmm. Cowboys, Eagles, Commanders. I honestly don't know the Commanders' corners. I'm not gonna lie. I know they have good, a great safety duo. Mm -hmm. 
Giants. Give me the give me the Cowboys. I just got the Cowboys defense. <laughs> hey, man, you got Cowboys the whole defense. Cowboys defense. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, let me think on this DBs right quick. We do got Kendall Fuller. Ah, uh, give me. No, nah, I'll take I'll take the Giants uh, DBs. Okay. I could rock out what they got. Still got Dory Jackson and um, Xavier McKinney. So decent. Deontay Banks. I can get with that. And then, dang, you really took Terry. I was really thinking I could slide him with CD. <laughs> um, still, you still got Smitty up there. Yeah. Who Smitty else? might have to be Smitty the, the best one. Or Dawson. That's the Tutty Finder himself. I need <laughs> I need a big year from him in fantasy. <laughs> um, I could go Jalen Hyatt. You know, he just switched to the one a three. Burner. A burner. <laughs> nah, give me give me Smitty. Give me Smitty for the other receiver. Bet bet bet. Right, so I got two picks left. So then give me give me Darren Waller. I think he's gonna have a huge year. Um, and then give me give me Dakota Prescott. And then you got you just need a tight end left. I mean, it's only really one option. Is Logan Thomas still the commander's tight end? I yeah. would check that. Yeah, he is. How is bro still in the league? Didn't he have like 30 concussions? Wasn't that like why he was about to retire? Honestly, I have no idea. Nah, hold on. I just I know, need, he, I know he's still in that roster. Up. He def. I thought he had a concussion problem. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong person. You about to draft Logan Thomas? Nah, but I just, I just needed to. <laughs> I needed to uh, double check myself. But nah, give me give me Dallas Goddard round right on my roster. Give me that tight end. Okay, okay. So your team, your team is Jalen Hurts, C.D. Lamb, Devonta Smith, Saquon mm-hmm. Barkley, Dallas Goddard, Cowboys O line, Commanders front seven, and the Giants DBs. Oh, okay. that's hey. Oh, I, that's kind of nasty. I ain't gonna lie. That's kind of okay. nasty. My team is Dak Prescott, A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin. I got Tony Powell in the backfield, Darren Waller, tight end, Eagles O-line, and the whole Cowboys defense, front seven and DBs. Yeah, I shouldn't allow that one to happen. So. <laughs> um, but, you know, you get inflamed in the comments either way because you got Dak at QB. You I know. You can't win games with Dak at QB. <laughs> he going to throw, the, he throw too many picks. Yeah, I lost regardless. It don't matter what my comment. The comments are going to say I lost regardless. Uh, so that's matter. funny. Both these teams is nasty though. Nah, the NFC, bro. The NFC East is it's sad. Bro. It's gonna be a tough division, bro. Sam Howell is him. Also, I'm in. I'm all the way in. I'm glad you with me, man. I'm glad you with me, man. I'm just listen. I am a Sam Howell guy. I'm. I've been. I've been uh, saying that he was gonna be at least average mm-hmm. since I seen the Cowboys game last year. I'm like, bro, he showed me some flashes. He was I, solid. I doubled down on it. Sam Howell gonna be better than Daniel Jones after the end of this year. Talk to him. Oh, I'm I'm all the way in. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, I respect it. <laughs> I Sam Howell gonna be better than Danny Dimes. When we when we come back at the end of the season, dudes want to rank NFC East QBs. Daniel Jones is gonna be fourth. I respect. I respect it. I and I don't even want to slight it to Danny Dimes, but bro, Sam Howell, he, bro, he really be swinging it. Like, <laughs> now he's bro, he's gonna be solid, bro. He's gonna be better than a lot of people think. He's mm-hmm. definitely gonna be better than a lot of people think, bro. He was good in college. Well, he was solid in college. He had some. He showed some flashes. He was good in the preseason. He got a whole bunch of weapons. Like he's gonna be solid, bro. Right. And it's not like I'm biased or anything. It's not like this, I have Jahan Dotson in like three of my fantasy. <laughs> need Sam Howell to turn up. I'm just for me, like. It'd be nice <laughs> if he did. I think he's gonna be good, bro. Who 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 you gonna think who you think gonna be better between all the question marks between Sam Howell, Jordan Love, Desmond Ritter? This year? Yeah, this year. I think Sam Howell. Um but, how, how would you rank them? Because those I feel like those are the three question mark guys. For this season alone, I would go Sam Howell, Jordan Love. And Desmond Ritter last. And Ritter, I feel like a lot of that is going to be hindered by, like, coaching. Like, he's just not mm. going to get the opportunity to throw to the elite <laughs> weapons that he has, which is crazy. 
like dudes out here using Kyle Pitts as a blocker. <laughs> but I, I think that will hurt him. But just even from a talent perspective, I think Jordan Love is probably – I'm the only one I'm even really confident in being like, I think like they could be the guy for that franchise for at least a s- stretch of time is Sam Howell. Mm-hmm. I'm out or not even should say I'm out. I, I, it's not enough that I've been able to see from Jordan Love to make me feel one way or the other. And Desmond Ritter, same thing. Like, even like what we saw last year, like, I don't want to be too harsh on rookie QBs. And like I said, with the system that he's in, it's going to be so run first, run heavy, especially with Bijan, too. So it's like, I don't know too, too much of what to expect. But if I had to pick one out of that bunch that's going to stamp him, certify himself this year, it's going to be Sam Howell. I think I will go, uh, I'll go Jordan Love, Sam Howell, then, um, then Ritter. I think, I think Jordan Love is just set up a little bit more for success. I think that O line is really good. That Packers line is good. They got decent receivers. I think Washington obviously has better receivers, but mm-hmm. um, they got a good defense. Like I think he'll be like a good game manager that could potentially turn into something. Because I think he, I think he's not going to have to do a whole lot for them to win games. And I think and he like, he had the best. He probably is in the best situation out of all of them in terms of like what is this year three for him? Right? It's like year. This is like year four, five. Dang, how not long five. Has this is like been? year four. But it was he, like he was behind. You behind freaking Aaron Rodgers and we see what Aaron Rodgers did to Zach Wilson in about two weeks bro yeah he and he got drafted in like right after Aaron Rodgers won an MVP so it's like we're not going to Jordan Love no time soon right um yeah when was his draft class he was drafted yeah this is year three for him um or maybe that was just he was drafted in the first round of the 2020 draft oh no this actually then this has got to be year four no, it's year four. Yeah, dang, it's year four. That's crazy. He sat. I'm gonna say he sat for three years. Yeah, so that alone you should set him up for at least to be in the best opportunity to succeed. I don't know. Maybe I am being a little bit biased from watching Sam Howell against the Cowboys <laughs> and guys that haven't John Dotson, but. I don't know, bro. Sometimes you just some QB just got that vibe. That feeling. Yeah. Right. Like you just I while I'm watching him play, even in his preseason, it's like you don't look like somebody that's never been a starter before. Like he making play after play, extended plays, accurate passes, long sustained drives. Like you said, they have the the best weapons out of all three of those teams that we just were talking about between you know the commanders, the Falcons, and the Packers. Um he just he, he looked the one that just got that it. I get that you, same feeling. Yeah, you said you saw what Ron Rivera say. He said he didn't even know that Sam Howell was that good. Oh, so yeah, I, I think I, he gonna have a solid year. Yeah, sure. I think he's gonna turn up. Um, what do you think Jordan Love's ceiling is? Because I he's somebody that I think gets. I mean, again, anybody that hasn't gotten playing time like that is going to be hard to rate. Like, does he have, like, maybe three starts in his yeah. career? I know he started a game last year. Not last year. Oh, um, just just the one ago. start. Yeah, he started against the Chiefs, and that's yeah. I think that's his only start. And then it's just been preseason, and, like, that time last year against the Eagles, Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers got hurt. Man, yeah. Can't but, um, but it's like, yeah, I, I feel like I've seen people – people I feel like are really – you were either really in on Jordan Love and it's like, yo, he about to be how the Packers went from Favre to Rodgers. They about to go from Rodgers to Jordan Love. Like, they're just going to have a seamless transition of a franchise quarterback. Or dudes are being like, I'm out completely on Jordan Love. Like, they think he's just not going to be a good NFL quarterback. And I don't really feel like I've seen any in between in Twitter or, you know, some of the other podcasts or media places that are kind of doing NFL reporting. So what do you think, what do you think his ceiling is? I think his ceiling is like a, like the twelfth best quarterback in the league, and I, I mean like his absolute ceiling, like mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins or something like that. Like I don't, yeah. I mean, like you said, I haven't seen enough to be like, oh yeah, he's gonna be top five, top ten. Like I, I don't haven't just haven't seen enough of that. But um, off the little spurts and like just the fact that he's set up for success already, I can see him being like the twelfth best quarterback as absolute peak. Okay. And I think. 
I think a more realistic outcome is just him being like a really good game manager. Yeah. Like not being like he's going to start like he's going to be a franchise quarterback, but not like a superstar quarterback, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You think Zach Wilson will ever revive his career somewhere or maybe in New York after Aaron Rodgers dips? Hell no. He stinks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Now he got <laughs> no, right? You're not wrong though. That was legitimately some of the worst quarterback play I've ever seen in my life. Forget level of football. Like it was like for the competition you were going against, bro. You look, you single handedly held your team back. What I will say is that it's. I think it's easier. Oh, my bad. I think it's oh, almost blowing fancy. up. It's I like know as a timer, bro. yeah. <laughs> I think it's easier to get a guy who has like he has a good arm, like he makes certain plays, like he makes certain throws that you're like, like not a lot of people can make them throws. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think it, it might be a little bit easier to get him to m- learn the mental side and the little stuff. Um, that that's something that Aaron Rodgers can kind of help him out with, rather than if he had the little stuff but just didn't have the talent, the arm talent to like make those big throws and like be a, a good quarterback. So I think there's a slim chance. Like a like, I think it was a very slim chance. But he might turn out to be something sitting behind Rodgers for at least like two years. So, okay, but I would I, I ain't putting no money on it. I'd say that much. No, I think that's fair. Being like he could be a, a high level game manager, like outside of that elite tier, but still a very quality franchise quarterback. I think that's mm-hmm. fair. Um, some quick hitters before we wrap up. Obviously, the season is kicking off this week. Thursday night football. Lions, Chiefs, who you got? Chiefs. Come on, man. Chiefs, Chiefs by how much? I think it's going to be a, a closer game than people think, though. That Lions yeah. offense, bro, and with no um, no Chris Jones, mm-hmm. I think Jared Goff is going to carve them up. I think Gibbs is going to have a game. see what happened last time Goff and Mahomes met on prime time. Bro, <laughs> they, I think, they almost put up 100 points combined, bro. That Lions offense is going to absolutely destroy that Chiefs defense with no Chris Jones because they're not going to have no pressure. Like, Jerry Goff with no mm-hmm. pressure. That are, O-line's already one of the best in the league. So, with Jerry Goff with no pressure, he's, he's going to cook them up. But, like, I just think, I think Mahomes is going to find a way to win that game. Okay. But it's going to be close. There ain't going to be no blowout. No, nah, I definitely think it's going to be a close game down to the wire. And that'll put – for the people that aren't aware yet, and you know you should be, bro, Detroit is – what would Deion say? We ain't coming. We here. Detroit yeah. <laughs> is here, bro. This is they, they about to really take over in the NFC North. Uh, Sunday night football, Cowboys, Giants, who you got and by how much? I got the – it's what's in Dallas? In New York. So, Ooh. yeah, they have MetLife. I go Dallas. I go Dallas by – Dallas by, to, to, by 10 points. I was gonna say Dallas by fourteen. Yeah, I was, I was say by ten points. I I give a little bit more respect to 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 the Giants. Mm-hmm. And then last one, Monday Night Football, Bills Jets in MetLife. That's a tough one, man. Because like, bro, the Bills. I don't know. I ain't really been feeling like just the everything, <laughs> like everything with them. Like the whole offseason has just been question marks. Mm-hmm. I got the Jets by. Three. Yeah, it's definitely going to be close. And I feel like it's going to be close, and it's going to be like an Aaron Rodgers game-winning last-second drive. They go to a field goal, or he get a last-second touchdown, and it's like he's in New York. It's Monday night. They, mm-hmm. They're they playing in New York on 9-11, like, bro. I go, I go jet. Yeah, I go Jets by. I do the same as I think. I go Jets by three. Well, I was gonna go Bills three or Jets three, but I'll go Jets by three because I think like the moment feels too perfect for them to come in against like a, a in division opponent, but also like one of the top dogs in the AFC with their new toy at quarterback and like really mm-hmm. stamp it on Monday night. That's like, nah, this is our year. And they they need to win these like early because their first six games are a gauntlet. Like mm-hmm. they got, I think it's off the top because I keep hearing people talk about it. So like I damn near memorize it at this point. I know they got the Bills, they got the Cowboys, they play y'all, they play Yo! the Patriots, they play the Eagles, they play the Chiefs. Not in this, I don't think it's those last two are no, nah, but yeah, you got them all right. And it they play one more Bills, Cowboys, Patriots, Chets, Broncos, Eagles. Yeah. The only like oh. the ones that I think they're definitely gonna win are like the Broncos and the Patriots. And even then the Patriots have beat them 15 straight times. So it's like, is that a real stat? 
of real stat, I swear. <laughs> they beat him. 15? 15, 14 or 15, one of the two. Straight Isn't that time. like seven years, <laughs> bro? Tom Brady. But even even after Tom Brady, when Cam Newton, Mac Jones, they just have not beat them, bro. Personally, as a fan, I wouldn't allow that. I would have, after like the 10th time, <laughs> I would have suited up. Yeah, there's no shot. I'm not going to take that disrespect <laughs> and just be a bystander. Like, you're going to have to. Who the Patriots even have? Like, Gronk? You're going to have to catch it on me, bro. I'm not, <laughs> not about to just keep violating my team year after year, bro. Brady? Not doing it. Nah, bro. I'm. We locking this up, bro. There's no way. So I'm saying, so even the gimmies is like, it ain't really gimmies. Like, Belichick got their numbers. So they, yeah. they're going to have to come out strong. So I got it. It's, it's going to be a good Monday night game for sure. I'm going to be locked to the TV for that one. I'm going to be locked this whole weekend, bro. Football is back. Football is back. <sighs> Can't wait, man. Yeah. Can't wait. With, with that, that is going to do it for episode 28 of the Off the Glass podcast. We slowly approaching 30, bro. I cannot believe we got this many episodes done. Um, if you made it this far, as always, we appreciate you. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Then go over to the audio platforms, five-star review, pre-download the show. Um, yeah, enjoy enjoy the NFL kickoff this week. Um, it's, it's like Christmas. And then in a couple, like, what, a month and a half, we get to do it all over again for the NBA season. Mm-hmm. And then we get, like, 150 days where it's at least football or basketball on TV. It's never not something on. Because it even be days now where there's no WNBA. I go and look, and it's like you open the ESPN app, and it's like the U.S. Open tennis. I can't get with it, bro. Nah. I can't. I can't. No disrespect to Venus or Serena. I can't get with it. But yeah, we appreciate you as always for watching or listening. Um, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.